Okay, let's talk about the uh, multi-site uh, fabric uh, deployment uh, using the CNM in a few clicks. But uh, before, let's have a look at the um, solution itself. So VXN EVPN multi-site is a solution to interconnect two or multiple VXN uh, EVPN uh, fabrics in a scalable fashion and over an IP only networks in order to extend layer two and layer three networks using the same uh, single transports. So the function of multi-site is uh, achieved uh, via the border gateways that are part of the VXLAN uh, EVPN fabrics. For example, in a leaf and spine uh, data center fabric, uh, it can be a leaf node uh, or a pair of leaf nodes, a pair of spine nodes, uh, or uh, a separate device acting as a gateway to interconnect uh, the sites. Right? Actually, it can be uh, up to six uh, uh, nodes per site. A VPN multi-site can be uh, leveraged uh, to extend network across uh, legacy data centers or a mix of uh, the legacy and modern uh, fabric, so very flexible. One of the key particularities uh, of uh, EVPN multi-site is that the extended VXLAN tunnels, the internal and the external VXLAN overlay networks, are stitched together at the uh, border gateway VTEPs to form uh, the bridge domain end-to-end -end across multiple locations without regressing the transport back to a dot one queue or VRF flight uh, end off. The objectives of uh, VXLAN EVPN multi-site are several. To offer a solid boundary, reducing the failure domain to its uh, smallest diameter in a very simple fashion. To significantly increase the end-to-end -end scalability and to offer the flexibility to dedicate uh, devices for uh, the border gateway roles or dual attach host uh, and service nodes to the border gateways from which you can also connect um, each fabric to an external layer 3 uh, core network J just to list a few objectives right so finally the multi-site architecture provides uh, a very granular control of uh, how the layer 2 and the layer 3 communication is extended across the sites. You can limit the overlay control plane updates, uh, propagations outside uh, the fabric. You can uh, reduce uh, or eliminate uh, bump traffic. Uh, and, and basically, the underlay domain is uh, delimited uh, per fabric. This being said, so um, let's have a look at the DCNM. To give to DCNM the infrastructure intent for deploying uh, automation, a role is given to each node, right? This is something we already discussed at the beginning. So the border gateway role is not an exception to the rules, as you can see. And um, the border gateways uh, can be uh, layer three based, any cast border gateways deployed at the leaf layer, or it can be deployed uh, in a VPC border gateway mode uh, to locally dual attached layer two networks uh, or endpoints. With this VPC border gateway mode, um, uh, uh, it supports the uh, function of a distributed anycast uh, gateway, the DAG, the famous DAG for locally attached uh, endpoint if you, if you need. And some enterprises may desire to initiate uh, the function of border gateways from the spine layer and um, with the, 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 the existing role of uh, the border gateway spines uh, from uh, DCNM, right? So that's the three roles uh, uh, that you can see, right? And the role of, um, of uh, border gateway spines, um, uh, we only support the layer three based in the cast uh, gateways uh, that can be uh, deployed. Right. So DCNM automates uh, the deployment of uh, VXN VPN multi-site in few clicks, and this is very visual. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new fabric with the um, MSD template. Then uh, we make sure that the border gateways used for the interfabric connectivity have been set to the uh, border gateway roles. Um, and uh, we move the fabric we wish to interconnect into the multi-site domain. This is very visual and we save uh, the configuration when uh, we are ready, okay? We can preview the configuration and we can deploy. 
Okay, now for the next demo, uh, we have now two fabrics. So this fabric number two have been created exactly the same way that we created the fabric uh, number one. And uh, what we want to do is um, to interconnect the back-to-back, -back, uh, uh, the multi-site uh, domain, um, and uh, make a, a full automated um, uh, configurations. Uh, let's go to the demo. The goal of this demo is to deploy the multi-site domain or MSD. And before you deploy the MSD, you need to go into each fabric to assign the rule of border gateway to the nodes used to connect the interfabric networks. In fabric one, you assign the rule on the two leaf nodes to the border gateway rule. Now you assign the border gateway rule to the other leaf nodes. You can save and deploy. After a short period of time, you can preview the configurations to be pushed to the new border gateway nodes if you wish. You deploy it. You can see the deployment has been successful. You need to repeat the rule assignment to the border gateway in Fabric 2, which is not included in this video. Next step is to create an MSD fabric for which you select the fabric template MSD Fabric 11. Then you give a name in your fabric, for example, MSD. And because you want to fully automate the uh, interfabric connectivity, you change the default settings from manual to automatic pairing for both the overlay and underlay connectivity. You can enable the VXLAN tunnel encryptions using CloudSec uh, if you wish. You can leave the other parameters by default or you can change the IP address range for the loopback address 100 and for the uh, interfabric configuration for the point-to-point -point interfaces. Remember 10.100.1.0. And you can enable the backup function from uh, Vistap for all fabrics that will be part of the uh, multi-site domain. You save your settings. The next step is to move each fabric into the MSD, for example, uh, fabric one and fabric two. So the Fabric 1 has been moved to uh, the MSD domain. Now you need to add the um, Fabric 2. When done, you can see the physical connectivity established between the two sites with the leaf nodes and interface details. You can change the topology to tabular view and you can select the link tab that displays all the links that exist across the two fabrics. You can filter if you wish. Here I use the interface 1 slash 20 to interconnect the two fabrics. So I do a search for 20. There are two links established toward the remote site. You can edit each link. As you can see, the IP configuration for those interfaces have, are left empty. DCNM will take care of this attribution from its address pool automatically. You are now ready to uh, save and deploy. After a short period of time, you will be able to preview the configuration to be pushed toward each border gateway node. You can see the BGP configuration with its neighbors, the local and remote border gateways, the loopback address 100, as well as the configuration for the DCI and fabric tracking for fast convergence in case of failure. Deploy the configuration and wait for completed deployment successfully. You can visualize the point-to-point -point underlay connectivity as well as the uh, BGP peering establishments between all four border gateway nodes. You can return to the tabular view and look again at the interface 1 slash 20. The interfaces has been automatically configured with the IP address from the pool 10.100.1.0. You can use the filter to retrieve the two point-to-point -point underlay networks, 
as well as the four overlay interfaces. The next section covers the deployment and the integration of a classic LAN with uh, VXLAN, EVP, and multi-site infrastructure. Thank you for watching.